Hey gang, are you new to this podcast? Have you subscribed on Spotify, Stitcher, or Apple Podcasts and realized that you can only access the 20 most recent shows on these platforms? Do you, my friend, want to binge on How Did I Get Here? Well, check out our archives that are available on the Podbean app. If you follow us on the Podbean app, we have every single show ever released on that on that platform. You'll also get all of your favorite shows like Fresh Air, WTF with Mark Marin, ID10T, the Michelle Obama podcast. All podcasts available there, and you can also access over a thousand How Did I Get Here episodes. So, download the Podbean app from your app store and start listening today. Let's get down. I'm Johnny. I'm your host. Merry Christmas. This show is dropping on Christmas Eve. I hope you are all somewhere that you really want to be. Be that with family, with loved ones, with friends, with your loved one, with your with your significant other, or even if you want to be alone. As long as that's what you want to do, I hope that's where you are right now. Spending the holiday the way that you want. That's right, baby. 2021 is almost at an end. It's been a crazy year. Um, I'll be, I'm actually doing this on Tuesday before Christmas. So uh, I'm doing this intro on Tuesday before Christmas. So I'll be in Houston with family. I've been, uh, I do not, I've not, (laughs) I hope you got your Christmas shopping done at least by now. Hopefully I've gotten mine done by now because as of Tuesday, when I'm doing this intro, I've only gotten one present. I need to get it together. That's part of my thing on Wednesday. I've been looking for a car. Uh, My, I've, I've told you guys about that. But it's it's been really hard, man. I, I There was a car I really liked, and I was supposed to go see it today at 11. I'd made an appointment to go do a test drive because you got to make appointments. So I made an appointment to go do that, and they texted me at 9.30 saying like, hey, sorry, man, your car sold. That's a drag because I went and saw two other cars I didn't really like that much. So anyway, the car search goes on. Hopefully, I'll find one. Hopefully, I'll get all my Christmas shopping done before I go to, to Houston for Christmas. And, and hopefully, you've got your Christmas stuff done right? It's a crazy time of year, man. If you are alone, if you find yourself alone, if you find yourself feeling alone, maybe if you're, if you're alone at Christmas and that's not where you want to be, reach out to someone, do what you can, man. This is a, this is a tough time of year for a lot of people. And I just want you to know that there are people out there that care and there are people out there that are there to help. So, uh, so reach out, reach out, reach out, do what you can. All right. Gang, I have a great show for you today. You know, uh, since 1978, Esther's Follies has been bringing modern-day vaudeville theater to Austin, Texas, every Thursday, Friday, and Saturday night, uh, right here in Austin, Texas. Um, you, I'm sure you've been by there and seen, you know, at least at least walk by there on Dirty Six, and all of a sudden you see these people, like, performing in a window, and you're like, what the hell is going on in there? Usually there's a guy dressed like whatever the president is at the time. Usually. Um, and uh, and they've, they've had a crazy year. You know, they had to be closed a lot of the year. And uh, and they went ahead and did, like, started a YouTube channel and did a bunch of really great stuff. But what I wanted to tell you is today I've got Sean Brannigan and Ted Meredith from Esther's Follies on the show. Both of them have uh, uh, combined 38 years at Esther's Follies. You can find Esther's Follies at esthersfollies.com. We have a great conversation about the history of Esther's Follies. There's actually a great book by my dear friend Jesse Sublet. I've not read this book. I've read three of Jesse's books, and he's been on the show like three times to talk about them, but not this Esther's Follies. But Jesse's a great author. You can find this book at esthersfollies.com. You can find out more about esthersfollies.com if you don't know what it is that I'm talking about. It is a modern-day vaudeville theater located in downtown Austin, right here on 6th Street, historic 6th Street, in our entertainment district. They have shows every Thursday at 8 p.m. and Friday and Saturday they have shows at 8 and 10 p.m. Go to estersfollies.com for all of your Esther's Follies need. And listen, gang, uh, go support Esther's Follies. Go out there, see a show. I know the Omicron is coming up and I know that I've had all these people on here promoting things and I've been promoting things and it's t- a time to be safe. 
I hope that this holiday season you you keep safe, healthy, and and sane. But also, uh, check out Esther's Follies. <laughs> Go to esthersfollies.com and listen, have a really Merry Christmas. Very Merry Christmas. Have a holly jolly Christmas. Have the best Christmas you've ever had. And enjoy my conversation with Sean Brannigan and Ted Meredith from Esther's Follies. Let's get down. Hey, Liz Abu, can you hear me? It's nice to have funny people. There's no sound booth. <laughs> yeah. Now, normally I don't. I don't. I mean, some musicians are funny. <laughs> Many I'm musicians funny. are funny. Many yeah, musicians are funny, but you get the whole, like, you know, you know what I mean. <laughs> the tortured artist? Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. It's one more about the perception. We're also very tortured artists. Yeah, we torture one another. Yeah. That's... Yeah. They got the TAS, the tortured artist syndrome. <laughs> There you go. Or as my girlfriend in college called the young sensitive asshole. <laughs> young sensitive asshole. A ton of those in college. Everybody very fraught. Um, how are you guys doing? Is Super it good to be good. back? Yeah, man. It's been it's been a blast. It's been a little, you know, hinky. We started back in June, uh, back when we thought, you know, uh, you get a vaccine and then it's yeah, yeah. done. You're good. Yeah, yeah. And then they started doing breakthrough cases. The numbers in Texas went up. And had to scale back a little during September, but now we're around in the corner. Hopefully, hopefully. Yeah, we started when we brought back the show. The first number was this great big celebratory. COVID's behind us. Throw away your masks. Let's all you know get together. And then within a month, we were sort of rewriting it. Mm, COVID's still kind of <laughs> here. Just, Maybe yeah, we yeah. should be a little more careful. Just our bets a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, essentially because we're hosting a super spreader event five times a week. Right, right, right. right. There's something yeah. horrible about feeling like it. And I'm I'm in this band Skyrocket, and we had these these uh, shows that we had booked in April or March, and then the tickets went on sale at the beginning of June. Yeah. For an August show. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so we had sold out shows that were like 50% attended. But like that, I mean, it's pretty fucked up when you go out there and start like trying to get people to start coming out again and it all shuts down. Yeah. It makes yeah. it, it's almost well, twice as bad. Not only that, but the like the people that do show up <laughs> to those sorts of events are probably not the, the ones, your top choice for people to come because they're probably mm-hmm. the ones being the lack, most lax about it. Right. Yeah. following things as it is. Yeah, I'll say that I mean, we did shows over that those first couple of weekends of August that were like Houston, San Antonio, and Dallas, and like, or Houston, San Antonio, and Austin. Mm-hmm. And uh, San Antonio was pretty full, but like Houston was like, <laughs> there was no, it was just like a normal night. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Everyone just packed down right. each other inside, breathing in each other's faces. Yeah. 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 It's a, it's a fun time for a live performance, that's for sure. Yeah. So it's getting back to normal now. You got people going and you're... Yeah. Yeah. Things seem to be going pretty well, pretty mm-hmm. smoothly. Uh, I mean, everybody in the cast is vaccinated. We've all got our boosters and stuff. And we can't force people to wear masks, but we encourage it. And then we roast you really bad uh, if you're not vaccinated because we make a lot of jokes at their expense. Yeah, true. Right away. Yeah, we wind up with maybe about a third of the audience wearing their masks through the, the show. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everybody seems to want to wear them in the lobby, which is cool. Uh, yeah. We encourage that. But then we spend the next two hours, like, literally spitting on the right, audience. Right, 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 right. Front three rows. Well, know? that's the weirdest thing about this whole thing is, like, how, like, okay, like, uh, the shows that we did do at, at 310, it was like, you had to wear your mask to come in. Right. <laughs> then once you're in, like, but then, that's the part where it gets bad. <laughs> you it know is, what but I mean? too, like I wear my mask and play. Like when I go into the gym, I'll wear my right. mask all on the way in the door, and then I get to my thing and take it off. And it's a, it's performative, but it I think it's an important. I think it's an important performance to do to demonstrate. Right? Yeah, right, I'll, right. I'll I'll take the hit. I'll wear the mask even when it's not. It's fine because I'm like necessary. religious about my mask at the grocery store. Sure, that's like the one place. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which, yeah, and and I always go at like odd. You know, I use. Uh, our, our acting hours uh, right, right. so that I can go like when nobody else is there but I'm still wearing it even mm-hmm. if I'm the only one in the aisle or whatever Sean did you write that H-E-B the song oh I think so yeah 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 That's yes good, the yeah. H-E-B people like yeah. that we got a big basket of food on opening night from them so oh, that, really? yeah, that's, yeah, that's awesome I think that's why yeah 
Um, do we do we know each other? I don't know. Do we? Do I look familiar to you? Because you look really familiar to me. May, well, maybe have have you been seen. to Esther's Follies? <laughs> I have. I, it's funny because I've only been. I mean, I've I've lived here consistently since 1991, and I've been once. I'm sorry. I've never seen oh, the back. Oh, it's bats. okay. Hey, I never saw it until I was in it, so I really can't. <laughs> Oh, we may oh, have run into one another. It's a yeah. small town. Yeah, I but mean, I don't guys... get out much other than Esther's. Like okay. I'm not really right. that does take about up our weekend. Yeah, yeah. So I used to spend weekend. a lot of time at the Velveeta Room. Oh, okay. Oh, then, yeah, you were there yeah. since the nineties. Sure. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. 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 Even if it was just outside during a smoke break or something. Yeah. 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 I used to smoke. I just quit smoking. Good I was watching you. you smoke. I had my first smoking dream last night. Oh. Did you wake up wanting a cigarette really badly? No, I woke up like, wow, that was intense, man. Yeah. It was intense. Like, I was like, fuck it, and I'm smoking. What is a, a smoking dream? Is it like, I you're imagine smoking. it's black and white and it's in French. And- <laughs> 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 yeah, exactly. No, 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 it was pretty colorful. And made? I was like, I was just like in this zone where I was like, and fuck, like, I, I was lighting it. Someone was like, Johnny. And I was like, fuck you. Like, it was like this, fuck. Very like, I, I did. I said, fuck you. So more of a punk rock feel. Yeah, yeah that's how I felt. Yeah. Um, uh, do you, losing Trump as like mm-hmm. a person to. I mean, have we lost him? Uh, no, we haven't shake. lost him. But yeah, no, that was a But consistent... is he the focal point of all this stuff anymore? Absolutely. I mean, I'm sure if you ask him. Thankfully. Yeah, he'll, he'll tell you different, but. Yeah, no, we uh, yeah we barely reference him in the show right now. I mean, well, uh, you know, he comes up anytime we do really political stuff. Uh, he tends to warrant a mention, but we've shifted over to Biden now, pretty full. Mm-hmm. full uh, who's force. Biden? Uh, I am. You yeah. are? Yeah. I, yeah. Yeah. We finally came up with the, my solo for Biden. Was it's he's the thing is Trump is so easy to parody. Um, and, um, almost he's too, almost like, too easy. He's, he falls into the realm of self-parody, and we've consciously made an effort not to include Trump in the show simply because I don't want to throw any more oxygen to that asshole. Yeah, 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 you know, like yeah, if yeah, we can if we yeah. can sort of purge him from the zeitgeist, that'd be one on us. Yeah. Uh, but since Biden is less interesting, the angle we came at it from was uh, Biden doing close-up magic to explain <laughs> the, the problem. <laughs> one thing all Americans love it's close-up magic. So you know. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, all the tricks go wrong, and he's, he's terrible at it. But when you when you you have to sort of find a, an angle to come at somebody like that sideways, yeah, you know, because yeah. Biden by himself is not terribly funny. He's just sort of a typical, you know, your typical right. politician. But it, and it infuses that sort of dad energy that that I think Uncle Joe. Yeah, right, right. Playing. He's just trying so hard. Yeah. He, he just wants to be liked so badly, <laughs> and he's literally yeah. failing at that. I yes. Mean, like, yeah, yeah, like, yeah. No, no, I try and yeah. I have the foam ball. We can make COVID disappear and open my hand and a hundred balls come out, you know. Son of a bitch, a Delta variant. We got science working on it. We fine. Um how is it you guys like like uh Sean, you've been there how long have you been there? Twenty three glorious years. So ninety eight. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh Wow. Where did you come from before that? Uh, I was raised uh, back east in Boston, and then I moved to Seattle after college and spent a couple of years there uh, and then moved here. And I got involved with a sketch comedy group that worked out of the Velveeta Room, and then everybody there was invited to audition for Esters. So I auditioned for Esters and Esters, Esters. And then within a year, I was making enough money to quit my kitchen job. And uh, so I've been making my living as an actor. Awesome. Where were you kitchen jobbing it? At Mezzaluna. Oh yeah, that's you a remember nice place. Of course yeah, I do. Yeah, there were some right. fancy dinners. Those were like record. That was a record company uh, place in the nineties. For yeah. like that. That's when they came to town to yeah. take Some, you to a fancy place. Sometimes when he's uh, you know dancing a little too hard on stage, you can still smell that like burnt uh, olive oil and garlic <laughs> smell that comes from having worked. In <laughs> no, that's just the olive oil you use on your eggs. Oh, <laughs> garlic nice. olive oil. Yeah. Ted, Ted and I live together. You do? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. How's that go? Super, live together, super you work sexual. together. <laughs> it, well, that's Highly good. Uh, yeah, no, the, the well, uh, it was kind of perfect time because we moved in uh, just a little bit before the pandemic started, and so then we were on lockdown, and we were uh, producing video content, right, for the show, right, uh, for, and it was. Like yeah, couldn't could have been quarantined with a better guy. Oh, sure. It kept us busy, you know. Like we were just cranking out. Right. Anytime we had like some dumb idea, unlike usually at Esther's, there's kind of a process, and right, it takes a while. We might work on something for a couple of weeks and then pff, decide not to do it. 
there was no time for that uh, during, the, right. during that time. We would like film something, slap it together, uh, you know, b- both basically learn the, how to edit film. Yeah. And, um, and you then, had yeah. a little theme song, The Daily. The yeah. Daily Dose of uh, Vesters. Yeah. And yeah. I was actually, yeah. I was the last night I was a little drunk and sort of looking through the stuff. We produced. A couple of pretty good videos. It was kind of a crash course in guerrilla yeah. filmmaking. Like yeah, we yeah. did some some okay and fun stuff. And it's remarkable now that what we all have, you know, these amazing cameras in our pockets and can edit on the fly on our phones. And yeah, yeah. The the Trump that uh, not to go back to the Trump, but the Trump yeah. Office parody is is really fucking oh, good. It's really you, brilliant. Yeah, that was I can't one of our last ones. That no was one ever super thought fun. of doing that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, Michael Scott is very much a yeah, Trump yeah. style yeah, you character. Can, yeah. 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 And Jared is definitely Dwight. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. I watched that one. That yeah. one in the uh, the Trump Christmas Carol. I thought was particularly was effective. Piece. Yeah, yeah. the three parter. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, um, all right. Outside of acting, in there, uh, you also do props, Sean. Uh, yes. Yeah, I make okay. most of the props at Esther's. Uh, and I like to make puppets. Uh, I was. Oh, so I, you're right, right, right. We have this in common. I'm friends with the guys in Fragile Rock. Oh, there we go. Yeah. Sure. Yeah, I built yeah. them. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I built them. For, and Fragile Rock's on its way back. Are they good? Side note. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I was going to ask. I was like, I wonder what happened. I tried to produce them, and I went to like a rehearsal, and I think I, I freaked them all out. <laughs> That's hard to do because they're pretty freaky already. No, I think I came out it like I. I I'm a musician, right? So there, fundamentally, there's like a weird chasm it's, where I'm yeah, like, this stuff's got to get a little art. bit better. Yeah. And they were like, oh, we're not going to spend our time like learning how <laughs> yeah, to fucking yeah. play drums and yeah. stuff. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. Right. It's performance. And then when I heard the record, I realized how off the mark I came out there. I actually, I actually texted Brentley and told him, like, oh, I, I'm sorry, man. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, good on you. Because I got my feelings hurt because I felt like I really understood them as, I mean, do you guys... Obviously, you you connect with it. It's I mean, it started out as kind of a novelty act and then morphed into something a little more serious. The people who do it all take it very seriously, which is great. Yeah. You know. Yeah. The commitment is really where it's at with that. And we roll deep because there's like seven puppeteers, (laughs) three musicians. Like it's a big crew. Oh, wait. Were you in the band? Uh, I would sub in for Brentley once in a while. but Okay. No, he was there when I was at the rehearsal. Okay. Um, All right. So uh, how what, what exactly do you guys run Esther's Follies? Do you guys in charge Our, of no the... one runs? Esther's no, okay, <laughs> uh, no, the owners uh, Michael and Shana have have that distinction. Of okay, running, and they've been there since since the, the beginning. Since yeah. the beginning, nineteen seventy eight yeah. is when mm-hmm. it opened. Yeah, and it was it, it, it was where Flamingo Cantina is at first. Or uh, I don't that, remember exactly. No, no, it was at Liberty Lunch this, first because they, they owned Lunch? yeah they owned Liberty oh. Lunch. So they did it at Liberty Lunch. Right. And then they were on Sixth Street, uh, like where Maggie Mays was, or someplace like that. And then that burned down. Then they were in the Ritz, and, and then they spent this last twenty five, twenty eight years or something uh, where they are now at East at Sixth and Red River. Right. I'm, all my memories of them are from being on that corner. Yeah, and they've I, been there a good long time. I had a weekly residency at Steamboat on Sixth Street. I don't know if you remember that sure. place up the street from you guys. Uh, from like 1993 to like 1997 or something mm-hmm. like that, or 96 or something. Wow. But um, but I used to go by and you'd see the shows all the time. And uh, yeah, through the window. That's our best advertising. I know. Yeah. I remember when I, really? first, when I first moved to Austin, I thought I've, I've walked past there and I thought it was a drag show. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, oh. I, thought, I always thought it was like a burlesque show. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Like, oh, here's a burlesque thing. Yeah. What are they doing there? I, <laughs> yeah, is it because the window makes it extra exhibitionist uh, feeling? Is that you think? I don't know. Maybe, maybe because it's song and dance. Because you know, yeah, yeah and you only have so many references. For yeah. That. Is it weird? Like, do you guys get like young people in there? Oh, sure. Going yeah, there from the street. I mean, like, a lot of times, what happens is people who went in college bring their kids okay. when they start at UT. So oh, you got okay, this yeah. weird like generational yeah, yeah. thing. And then yeah, then any given night I mean, you know, Thursdays are the night like where we get a bus full of like people from Sun City up in Williamson County. So uh, you know, the average age is the same as the average room temperature. Uh <laughs> on the, those nights. And then it's a good line. <laughs> then other nights, uh yeah, then other nights it's like People in their twenties, thirties, yeah, it's it's all over the map. Uh, yeah, and the, the the late kids. shows will be like the young shows, like the eight o'clock is for 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 mom and pop, and right, right. The ten o'clock show is for the for the kids. Right. Do they uh, remember how they? What was the what was the show called on Friday nights at at Velveeta Room? 
the there have been so many it was a dirty show it started at 10 oh i don't know it was just it was just like you could be as dirty as you wanted yeah, kind yeah. Of show is that mm-hmm. did, does it they kind of do that the 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 like blue velveta is that the I don't know. Am I making that? Uh, there's no, 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 there's no. We don't adapt the show between eight and ten. There's no change. Not okay. really. Not okay. really. Sometimes at the ten o'clock, we'll include things that we couldn't include in the eight because of time. Okay. If, we have, if we're running a long show, but uh, the, just, the content doesn't change. We just hit the Although, curse words a little for a harder. hot minute, for about a month, we used to do a midnight show on Saturdays. Oh, yeah. Where we would hang around and we would just invite the audience to stay, and we were like, "If you want," we're, and we did all the sketches that were too dirty or too weird to do in the regular show, yeah. and that was a lot of fun. But yeah, it also made that, for uh, skinny three, dip. Skinny dip for three. But it made for three shows on Saturday, which was a bit much. Yeah. So that was, that was back in the Noel Wells days when yeah. she was in the cast. Yeah. Uh, it was one of our former cast members who went to UT RTF major and was at Esther's Follies and then went on to SNL. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Which is Master of None. I was going to ask about that. Like, what the... How many... I mean, People, she's probably our most famous. There have been a lot of graduates. How many big and famous? No, no. Noel's, Noel's about as close as we got yeah. to getting big and famous. Yeah. She was funny. Yeah, she on was, on Saturday Night Live. Yeah, she yeah, was great. Yeah, it was unfortunate she only got the year, but she went on to do I think much bigger and better things. Yeah, she was in yeah. Master of None. She self produced Mr. Roosevelt. So. Yeah. So, okay. So, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm I'm trying to get to get all this stuff. Oh, oh, yeah. My friend Jesse Sublet wrote. A book oh, Jesse. About you yeah, guys. sure. Yeah. Love Jesse. Yeah, great he's guy. been on the show a few times too. Yeah. Also, a couple people that are in your cast. I, uh, Tamika Soretti. Mm-hmm. She's still. She's in there. Uh, not saw, right now because okay. she's too busy. Oh, she's big and famous. Stuff. Yeah, I didn't even right, count right, her as too. former. She was with us briefly, and right. then oh, she, and she's in, now she's on, just getting work hand okay. over fist. I went to your website mm-hmm. and I looked at it, and yeah. uh, no, I think uh, yeah, we're all kind of hoping maybe she'll come back and slum it with us for a little while. Longer, yeah, but, but now she's on like the Wonder Years, and oh, like, that's she's, right, yeah, that's she's, right. Okay. She's, yeah. she's she's blowing up. Like yeah. she's doing real good. She was on the show last year. She was really nice. Yeah, really she's cool as person too. Yeah. Um, uh, Becky Joe, I've been on her show. Oh, sure. Comedians yeah. interviewing musicians. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. On uh, yeah, with music firsthand. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's a small town, man. It small is. A, town. It is a small town, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Creatively speaking. Yeah. Um, romantically too. Uh, <laughs> no kidding. Yeah, I, I, I matched on OK Cupid with the, one of our new cast members the other day. <laughs> it's just like, ha ha. That's when, yeah, that's when you yeah. know it's weird. I like it. I like it because when those things recommend your exes, you're always like, dude, yeah, you like, stupid. Come on, man. It didn't work the first time. <laughs> right. Your algorithm is effed up. <laughs> um, all right. So, um, as far as like like writing the sketches and everything, how how. Are the sketches new every, is the show new every week or is there like a, you guys have like, like Saturday Night Live has a a formula of this thing happens and this thing happens and this thing happens. They hit these characters and stuff. Sure. We, uh, yeah, we've, uh, there's a lot of like little staple bits in the show. I think in in a lot of ways to kind of anchor it for the audience because, I mean, it's impossible to describe our show, so I think sometimes things like Patsy or Sam I Am right, right. Uh, help give them a reference point. And then we have the the magic uh, element right, of right. Ray Anderson. That kind of you know uh, dictates a lot of the transitions. You know, like when we can do certain. You know, how many people are available for a sketch or whatnot. So there's a there's a, a slight formula to yeah what kinds of pieces go where. And then we just sort of evolve over time, uh, rewriting and adding new things, um, uh, refreshing. So, like, every week there's something a little different, uh, even in just the nature of live theater, right? It's a different show every time. But, the, uh, but it's, yeah, it's definitely more of an evolutionary process than a, than a sudden drastic change to the show. But also given the fact that people don't come back to Esther's but every six months to a year yeah we we're not luxury. sort of under the onus of creating a whole new show because every the week. people who came right, this right, week right. weren't there last week right so. right so one or two new things get in every week mm-hmm. we got a couple of new things going in tonight yeah uh, but if you come you know every six months or so it's a it'll feel like a radically yeah. different show yeah what's your new year's show i saw you were selling tickets for that yeah uh, I mean, it's basically a a, a best of uh, of everything from the year uh, mixed in with uh, usually we write a, 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 a New Year's Eve specific s- exclusive sketch uh, that leads us into the countdown. Uh-huh. Uh, so we have like a live countdown on stage. And uh, yeah, it's just kind of a big party. Yeah. I mean, and, a, and a banquet. And it's, a, you know, yeah, there's a banquet. Yeah. yeah. 
a lot of it is, you know, like you're you're uh, you're locking in something to do for New Year's Eve. Right, that's, right. <laughs> that's the yeah. big that's the big incentive. Now the show remains largely largely unchanged, but for the New Year's Eve reference, but we just do it a little later, so we hit that at midnight. You know. Right, right, right. Um, <laughs> seems like a crazy like you guys. You have to give out champagne and. There's all kinds oh, of, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Everybody yeah. gets pretty. Everybody gets shebang. pretty fucked up. And the and because we start the second show later, we have this like 45 minute break in between shows. So traditionally, we all get up to our dressing room and kill a couple of bottles of champagne, and then the the midnight show is a little loose. Sounds yeah. cool. <laughs> and, and it, yeah, a lot of. I mean, it's live theater. You know, any anything could happen. And a lot of times, some th- stuff does happen on New Year's Eve. Yeah, that's, right. Uh, that's the night that Chelsea got. So. Uh, <laughs> One of one of our actors uh, was playing uh, Marianne Williamson. You remember her from the exciting Democratic primary? <laughs> this was uh, in like 2020. Um, she was the sort of like loopy hippy dippy. Oh one. yeah 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 yeah. Uh, she repels from the ceiling <laughs> into into this like Democratic Party, you know, uh, New Year's Eve party, uh, and. The problem was she repelled, and then her wig got tangled in the apparatus that she's, you know, her little repel rig. And so she was suspended, like, toes just barely touching the floor, <laughs> just grazing the floor uh, with this giant wig right at her crotch. This, this merkin. <laughs> the merkin. The whole show to a complete standstill. Uh, yeah, I, yeah, I remember that. as Bernie, I was like, I haven't seen a bush like that since the 1970s. <laughs> <laughs> I think I had to like lift her up and so oh, she yeah. could not yeah, look. Uh, too. Yeah. This process. But there was a good 10 seconds at least where we were just like watching her right, and laughing. Right. <laughs> like, watching her slowly like revolve, audience. rotate on her repel yeah. rope. Just letting her live in that moment. Yep. It was pretty good. Yeah. And, you know, stuff like that happens. Uh, I don't think we could technically blame that on the booze, but still. Well, no, yeah, I wouldn't say that was the booze. Having to deal with something like that on the booze, though, is pretty... Like, <laughs> right. Maybe no, the booze yeah. didn't well, cause it, but like, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. No. Yeah, but we're definitely, just... we're definitely pros at dealing with the unexpected. The, the great luxury of Esther's, uh, even more so than just having a show that never closes, which is a... a the singularity in theater. I'm not, I'm not sure there's anybody else who does that. Is that we get an opportunity to perform five times a week. So the stuff that we perform over and over, we have honed. I mean, you can. There, there's a point in the show where Becky Joe shows me her watch, and whenever we do that sketch, it's nine thirteen. Like at that point in the sketch, it's always fucking nine thirteen. Yeah. Like we yeah, hit yeah. it to the minute, yeah. uh, but we get so locked in on these sketches that that they become so just really second nature. So if something pops off, mm-hmm. you know, we're we're not. You're, you're not straight. Yeah, you're not. Right, you're not right. struggling to find what's next. Yeah, and we live by the window and die by the window. If you haven't been to Esther's, our upstage uh, wall is a, a window out into Sixth Street. So anything goes out there. You know. Yeah, a lot of, a lot of titties. A lot of yeah. uh, people dancing along with yeah. us. Not as many titties as I would t- like. Not as many as I would there's like. There's been titties. Sure, there's sure. been titties. There's yeah. always titties. Yeah, wow, go. man. Well, going, you to get on. somebody with you're enough, right? get somebody yeah. with enough drinks in them in front of a whole crowd of people. You know, yeah, no, yeah. Mr. Rockstar, you don't dump get titties them out. So you're, There's yeah. a titties ended oh, a while really? back. Yeah, yeah. I mean, at least from, I don't know if it's was my that... age. <laughs> like I aged out of titties being shown. Oh, you know what I mean? Or maybe the uh, my, my audience might have. Might have aged, aged out, out of, of titties it. being shown. Yeah, there's not a lot of titties <laughs> inside the theater. They're almost no, always they're out, outside. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 And that, yeah, the Sixth Street, the, the, those goers, you know, we say, we get older, they say the same age. <laughs> yes. So to speak. Isn't that sad and weird? <laughs> um, so, uh, Ted, where do you come from? Like, I'm, a, I'm originally from Mesquite, Texas, a you? little suburb right outside of Dallas. Yeah. Uh, and uh, then I went to college at uh, Southwestern University in Georgetown. Yeah. Uh, this was when Georgetown was not part of Austin. <laughs> right, uh, right. As it is rapidly becoming. Yeah. And um, yeah, I, well, I went there to study as it was theater, BFA, and I you know, was going to become a true actor, a master of the theater arts, yeah. yes, a thespian. Uh, you know, wore a lot of black, a couple of turtlenecks. Um, and it was while I was there, I did, uh, we had like an adjunct professor for my period styles of acting class. It was like Shakespeare and anything right. before like 1800. And uh, it was Guy Roberts, who at the time was the artistic director for Austin Shakespeare. So when I graduated, I was like, 
I could move to LA or New York and starve to death and be poor. <laughs> I could move to Dallas back with my parents and you know do what passes for theater in Dallas in the early 2000s. Uh, or stay in Austin, where I, which I already love. Right, right, right. And actually get to do some Shakespeare. Yeah. So that's what I, I picked. And about maybe less than, well, about two years after that, I was in a production of Richard the Third, um, where in which I played two different characters, both of whom died, uh, spectacular murders, uh, and auditioned for Esther's Follies while I was doing that, <laughs> and literally went from from Shakespeare to the Follies. Wow! Yeah. Uh, what was it about the Follies? Like, would, did you want to do something fun and like? Yeah, uh, I mean, I always enjoyed comedy. I was, uh, you know. A, big joker yeah well i mean yeah the prospect of being a working actor yeah, yeah. at 25 and being able to like just do that was beyond my comprehension plus i never really wanted to be like famous you know i don't like the idea of uh, you know the whole uh, film industry is a little i mean as we've learned from me too it can be a little bit sketchy and weird um, were you scared about getting uh <laughs> about getting, getting sexually molested yeah. out there i mean i constantly i'm still a little worried about it i'm always a little apprehensive i don't go to a second location the advantage johnny <laughs> uh but i mean even by association no 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 it's a creepy there. fucking yeah. business man yeah very um yeah. and so you know the the yeah the prospect of uh, at the time you know, I was thinking oh, I'll just bide my time for a couple of years build up some experience maybe do some other stuff but then I fell in love with the place and I I've been there for uh, going on fifteen years now. Woo! Yeah. It's amazing. So um, do, do you guys do you still rehearse like weekly? Do oh, you? Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Every Monday. We oh have right, a that's what you said. Meeting. You had a. Yeah, you yeah. had rehearsals on Wednesdays, right? Yeah, and the, every yeah every Monday we have a writers meeting. Every Tuesday, Wednesday we rehearse for like uh, two or three hours in the afternoon, and then we rehearse just the stuff that's like definitely happening tonight for like an hour before we open house. On okay, Thursday and Friday. Yeah. So what what tell me about the writers meeting? How many writers are there, and what what is it? Is it all the performers? Or are there no, writers not, that uh, you don't everybody's see? Everybody's invited. We have a couple. Of, we've been sort of auditioning uh, other writers because we lost this guy Steve Baranowski, who was our our head writer uh, for a while. He was the only he guy who would out, write. So. Yeah, he he was a joke machine. Uh, he was the only writer who wasn't in the show. Mm-hmm. So thankful one one upshot of COVID is that we moved the writers meeting to zoom which i very much appreciate not having to come in just that one extra day you know yeah five days a week instead of six um but it's predominantly me and ted right now uh everybody else listens or contributes or adds ideas or things when it comes to you know typing and printing yeah you know it's more ted and i yeah well it's made us refine sort of like how how much do we really need to write you know how much can be Oh, we can actually still use this. It just needs these little tweaks or whatever. Mm-hmm. And uh, and then, yeah, for, I mean, for me, Sean's a little bit more, uh, uh, you know, dignity of hard labor from his Puritan <laughs> upbringing. <laughs> so yeah, whatever, get it. He's yeah. a little more diligent in his, uh, in his writing. Uh, whereas I'm much more of a, oh, I had an idea at like 2 a.m. and I can't go to sleep, so I'm going to write this this thing. Mm-hmm. And that's yeah. That's usually my. You 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 have a uh, do you wake up and write? What's your? Oh uh, yeah, on yeah. Uh, on Mondays and Tuesdays, or like last night, I was inspired. Or like, well, the pitch was ago. Like Ray yesterday said, oh, we need a song about uh, Big Bird and Ted Cruz because Ted Cruz is bitching about Big Bird getting vaccinated. Right, right, right. And all he did was give me the final joke, which was, you know, Ted Cruz is the only one that flies south in the winter when things get cold. So then I just coughed up a little song last night that, that you know, the songs we write, the, med, the the first act in the show is a, is a news medley where we do a bunch of sort of like 30 to 45 second songs, which are essentially late night monologue jokes set to music. So you come up with a joke and then, you know, and, and pick the song. Right. Yeah. So the so the Big Bird song is a B is for Big Bird. He went and got his shot. T is for Ted Cruz. He bitched and moaned a lot. Both of them are chickens who act like they're six years old, but only one of them flies south when it gets cold. Oh, uh, that's so, good. Boom. Yeah, one joke in out. Yeah, that's yeah, okay. We'll see. We'll we'll test it out tonight. <laughs> yeah, and the trick is we'd stack up like ten of those right up at the top of the show, uh, so that you're just cycling. Yeah, right. If you didn't like that last one, not, check right, this exactly. check this one out. Right, right, and it sets the pace for the rest of the show too, because everything else in the show is only like three or four minute long <laughs> bits too. Mm-hmm. And it's funny because you can do you'll do an hour of those right uh, where everybody's laughing. They love every single sketch. 
and then you start another sketch, and it's still this tension right at the top of it for, like, when's that first laugh going to drop? Yeah. So you have to, like, constantly be thinking. Like, uh, we have to, we don't have the luxury of, like, cutting to commercial or turning on a applause sign right, to right. say the, <laughs> the sketch is over. Yeah, <laughs> you know? yeah. So we have to have, like, a nice, solid ending to a sketch. And we've done tons of sketches that, like, uh, you know, they're great and they're funny, but they don't land on a nice enough punch right at the end to like tell the audience right. it's over and, yeah. and move on to the next. If, sketch. if the whole and audience kind of, isn't laughing at the end of the sketch, it's considered a fail. Right. Yeah. It's a terribly rigorous the writing for Esther's is a very, very specific beast. And that's why we're having trouble. I think that's why we have trouble finding writers who aren't in the show because it takes being in the show to really understand the how the fast right. these yeah, yeah, have yeah. to come. And no, I our, that. Our, like jokes per second are high. Yeah. Like, our, our standards are pretty high for yeah. being a, for being lowbrow humor. Our right. standards are very high. <laughs> God, and you guys don't you don't. There's no. You guys are never like closed for a few weeks. Right? No, yeah. Unless like unless there's a like unless there's a right. pandemic. Yeah, well, like, yeah unless there's. there's a, but there's no yeah. break. You just there's no season. No, uh, we take we usually we take off South by just because Sixth Street gets so crazy. I've, uh, I've been there during South by for other things yeah, right. that yeah. take place. Yeah. And then we'll take off the keys. Yeah. And, yeah. and then we'll take off for the motorcycle rot rally just because it's too damn loud down right. there. But that's about it. Oh, God, I bet that's fucking impossible. Yeah, no, that's do why we don't do it anymore. Yeah, it's yeah. ridiculous. It's impossible. Even just living here on Riverside, like it's I mean, you hear it. Yeah. yeah. Like, no, I, yeah. Leave, I leave town that week. <laughs> yeah, it's brutal. Um, so uh, what do you do during South by? Uh, I mean, sometimes uh, uh, sometimes we get a couple passes for being a venue, and so that's a great time. To, like I've seen a lot, I did, did a lot of South by film uh, stuff, and then uh, other times it's you know your one shot to like you know take take a week off and go to Paris or, or yeah, yeah. You know? I like to yeah I like right. to travel mm-hmm. yeah um, are you, I just I just it the visual of you guys having a writers meeting on Monday on Zoom. But you two are the ones that do the most work. But and then you the live room. together. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. Are you on different computers? Oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, we're in different rooms. And, but we always then we always sort of convene after in between yeah, yeah. the two of us. Yeah. It makes it so much easier to write when you have somebody nearby who you can say, "Oh, help me out with this," or you know, yeah. "Does this need a punch?" Or yeah. to throw to be able to throw one another yeah, sketches and here punch this up for writing me. Writing opportunities are really kind of the golden because uh, yeah, I'll just be like strolling through to get in the cup of coffee and I'll be like, Hey, well, help me out with this. And right. We'll hammer it. You'll sit there for five, 10 minutes. Yeah. Not long out something yeah. and then be like, okay, call it done. And, uh, yeah, those little opportunities have been pretty, pretty miraculous. Yeah. And I think doing all of our film stuff during COVID helped that a lot because yeah. we were, we were producing so much and every stupid little idea that came into our heads, we could film. You know, was, that was a good idea. So it, the place was able to stay open and you guys were able to keep your jobs by doing that. Yeah. And you were able well, to generate by enough that, by by the graciousness of, of you know yeah. uh, PP what were the PPP mm-hmm, loans mm-hmm. And, yeah yeah unemployment and city, PPP yeah, loans and the city gave us a, a nice you yeah know, chunk we had we had a Patreon page and people were very generous but it mm-hmm. certainly wasn't enough for you know twelve people to live on but we all right. got a little a little check every month from the Patreon stipend. people yeah. which yeah. was nice yeah, yeah that's nice really good it seems like with just the history of this I mean is the are there any other theaters that are like is Second City still a, a thing? Second, Second City's still, still a thing. thing. They're, I mean, but they've got they don't have the same. It's not the same people doing it that were doing it fifty years ago. I mean, right, most of them are dead. But uh, you know, it, Esther's Folly is, is like Second City if Alan Arkin were still working at Second City. <laughs> You know what I mean? Like, right. Yeah, also, yeah, yeah. Second City doesn't do a show. They've become this sort of massive. Right. They have classes and, right. and, and and all sorts of you showcases got- and venues for things. You know, there's a, there was Beach Blanket Babylon in San Francisco, which just closed, which was our sort of other competitor for like longest running yeah. single show in a single kind spot. Of like sister show in a way. But, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. There's only like three or four shows that anybody can even be like, oh, this reminds me of that. Right. Uh, and that was one of them. Yeah. Just, I was just reminded. I, uh, you know, uh, Howard Kramer. Sure. Yeah. Oh yeah, I remember. Okay, yeah. So I became friends with him because he was my comedy defensive driving instructor ah, at sure. Esther's Follies ah, on like yeah, a Saturday yeah. morning. Sure. Back then, we we had a lot of people Howard that Kramer, did that. Yeah. yeah. He actually had he got a job out of it. You know, Joe Ely. Uh huh. Me and Joe Ely's wife decided to take that class together. Mm. So we went together, and she thought Howard was so funny. She hired. 
him for Joe's like next birthday. Ah, <laughs> yeah, that's great. Yeah. Yeah, he was on Kramer, and uh, who else was it? Was Do you remember Austin Stories? Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. M- yeah. Matt Bearden. Yeah, yeah, I still, Bearden. I still uh, see him all the time. Yeah, yeah, like sure. Yeah. and stuff, yeah. yeah. It was actually a pretty funny show. Yeah, that was a good show. And everybody thought they were going to get famous. It was nice <laughs> for a second. I remember my, my wife, my ex-wife, uh, she, she worked at that 501 complex where they did all of like the post-production, and I think that's where whatever the production company is that did it, like got an office there and all this stuff, and there was so much like... All right, it's all going to happen for Austin. Right. They put, you know, Austin band posters on the thing, and dudes in the bands were like, dude, I'm going to be on MTV. Now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> See me on MTV back, last right, night. Right, yeah. <laughs> I mean, Austin is always, it's perpetually like, in about five years, things yeah, yeah. are really going to yeah. blow up in this <laughs> yeah, yeah. for the last like 30 years. It's been in five years. We're going to be L.A. too. <laughs> right. In theater and acting, is it like it is in music? Like, is there is it like a, a place to go kind of like get your shit together and then go off to another place to make it all happen? In uh, a big way? I think, I mean, from teaching improv, that was definitely, uh, we had a lot of people that were taking classes, failing, you know, like trying to get their, you know, their 10,000 hours from Malcolm Gladwell or whatever. Uh, and then they'd move to, you know, Chicago, New York. Right. LA. So there's definitely some of that in, in, in Austin. And it, in fact, we get a lot of people that like move out to LA and then that's when they book something here. <laughs> right, 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 right. Um, do, do you guys audition for stuff a lot? Oh, sure. Yeah. yeah. Ted does. I don't. I'm not very, I'm not terribly ambitious. Yeah. I don't consider myself to be that ambitious. You also have a good agent. My agent right. kind of folded. Like, I need to find a new well, one. Well, now they might listen to this podcast. Yeah, yeah. your agent's a huge Well, no, my agent's retired. Uh, then, oh. Yeah. <laughs> you should figure that out. Well, I no, have... but she passed me off to this other person. I had one meeting with her, and I never heard back. So, yeah, I should probably. Yeah. 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 But also, like, I've, I've definitely decided, like, when I was in college, I wanted to be a real actor, too, and then sort of figured out that I'm not. A really good actor, <laughs> but I'm, I'm an okay comedian. Like yeah. comedian, acting comedian is a little more technical. It's a little more surface level, and that's the kind of shit I identify with. Like I'm a very technical person. I'm all about intellectualizing it and sort of finding my way through. Right, and right. It's difficult. I, I find it difficult to connect with the whatever that you know the tortured kid inside who helps you cry on camera. But I can I can rattle off some jokes, no problem. So I think I found my niche there. Did, did you ever do stand up? I've tried uh, several times, and I've been I did okay, but it's goddamn terrifying. It's terrifying. Yeah, it's yeah. terrible. Stand up, you gotta you gotta want it enough to suck at it for a long time. Mm-hmm. To yeah. Really yeah. Get it. yeah, yeah, yeah. And get my it. ten thousand hours at Esther's is definitely not translate to right. Like you're starting no, fresh give, with yeah, stand up. Give you the you know the person that takes three years or whatever to get good at stand up. You've got the first year down. Right. Because right. <laughs> no stand up's like golf. It's just you and the ball. You know, all, right, everything right. else is a team sport, but stand up, it's just all you. Yeah, yeah. Um, did you say you guys teach improv? Uh, I did a teach did? Uh, for a long time with the Institution Theater, which kind of went under uh, during the okay. pandemic. But I've been thinking about uh, starting up some classes at Esther's again. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Does that? Uh, I guess that's a great that's a great way for those. Uh, it seems like most theaters have like a classes aspect to their Honestly, yeah thing. most of the improv school they make you know like the the reason they're open is because of the classes the shows you know they charge like five five bucks a ticket so it's a yeah. really kind of backwards thing to be thinking like oh we've got this show that that works and and sells tickets but oh let's just open up a, a school as well uh so uh you know between that and like waiting out to see when i feel comfortable being locked in a room with 12 people uh strangers every week uh, is you know that's a that's a, a another aspect of it, um, but yeah, I find improv improv was really I started doing improv seriously when I started at Esther's and it was like my little my little escape right because I wasn't contributing as much in the writing when I was first there you know so everything felt very um, uh, you know locked in like I had to I, you know it was, it's almost like auditioning every day <laughs> your first year at Esther's. And so improv was my place where I could go and just do whatever I wanted uh, and say whatever I thought was funny right at the moment when I felt like uh, when it you know came to me. And uh, also something that I could do on a Monday or Tuesday that didn't conflict with my right, schedule right. and stuff. And it just sort of snowballed from there into you know, one day uh, Tom Booker asked me to start teaching. And I was like, okay, and, and did. And it went, uh, yeah. 
the rest, as they say, is history. It's history. Yeah. I just saw a documentary about that. Uh, what's that guy's name? The super famous, like the improv. Del Close. Del Close. How was that movie? Yeah. It's really good. Yeah. yeah. He was fucking crazy, man. Yeah, that dude's not. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, crazy. Yeah. 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 But he did innovate, like, yeah. Most it's amazing. of what people talk about in improv to this day is stuff that you can trace to Del Close. Yeah. Um, and so much of what we laugh, we have laughed at for the last, like, oh, 50 yeah. years is directly touched by him yeah. in mm-hmm. some way. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Most Unbelievable. Most of the comedy of the 80s and 90s is yeah. almost yeah, yeah. directly in, from, from Del Close. Well, even, like, Tina Fey, I think, was... One yeah, she was a last, second city. Yeah, yeah, she was a second city. She started in their like touring show, uh, and then like Amy Poehler, uh, yeah, yeah. you know, um, Del Close helped them start the Upright Citizens Brigade. If I'm right, yeah, 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 he did, know. he did. Yeah, and between that, yeah, but just between Second City, I mean, yeah, Second City, <laughs> um, Improv Olympic, um, and UCB. That's like right. most of. Most of comedy from the last 50 years or something. Did that, uh, what was that improv theater with the question mark? Over uh, by Fifth was, Street and... Yeah, that's like, Fallout. Yeah, the Fallout. Fallout, theater. right. They're still Is around. that still happening? Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, they just, uh, yeah, they just kind of reopened very recently and started doing shows like... All, every night. Almost. Austin is spoiled for both restaurant choices and comedy shows. If you'll go on like Do 512, I was looking for something to do. And mm-hmm. every night, there are five or six venues doing stand up, either open yeah. mics or, or some kind of yeah, curated show. Really? Yeah. Like we are, for, for a city our size, we have way more comedy, I think, than, than a lot of other comparable sized cities. Yeah. A yeah. lot of funny people here. Do you go to shows? Uh, as often as I can. Who do you? Yeah. Uh, I mean, it'll usually be a matter of convenience. What's there? I'll, I'll pop, pop right. by the Velveeta Room sure. often, or uh, I used to go to Cold Town before they tore that shit apart. There was one when I was when I was seriously said, okay, I'm gonna try stand up. I remember I did three open mics in one night. I did like Cold Town, and then one other one, and then Spider House Ballroom at like one in the morning. Nobody in there. Palante was there. She was going up that night too. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, there's. I don't know where I was going with that, but. If I go to when I would go to shows, it was often to participate. Right, right, you know? right. Yeah, that was kind of yeah, that was me for most of the time too, because you know our weekends are spoken for. Uh, but yeah, I still try. I, I went to a Fallout show like two weeks ago. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Man, from like 2012 to 2015, I had a bunch of friends that were doing it, and it was great. And I was going to shows all the time. Like, I mean, I play every weekend, but like those Mondays and Tuesday yeah. things, and. Yeah. That's Charlie cool. Hodge had this thing that was on Mondays. That yeah, was, yeah, Charlie Hodge is funny as hell. So funny, yeah. And he he was one of my best friends, uh, and I don't. He disappeared. Like yeah. he went went underground. Yeah. <laughs> he stopped being funny. <laughs> but his shows that. were great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I used to go to uh, is it Punch? Uh, yeah, Matt yeah, Bearden that show. Matt show. Oh, yeah, that, that was great. That's always a good thing. I don't know if he's bringing that back in or not. I, he hasn't yet. I was going to go to a show last Monday called Cocktails at the creek and cave where it was the, the the setup was people from the audience would get up and tell like embarrassing sexual stories and then there was this panel of comedians that would roast them and i thought it sounded so fun but that sounds my, my awesome date, my date canceled so i didn't go so we'll do it next time but uh i i did a like uh at the fallout they somebody there was a group that was doing this kind of like ass cat kind of show oh probably fuck this week yeah. nope no at the fallout yeah it was some of the ariel Leggett, you know her uh yeah it was like uh, her and some other people. She was the one that I knew because she's also a musician. Uh-huh. She was like, oh, you should come and be like the person that tells the stories. And then we yeah. do these improvs based on your stories. Oh, it might have been Stool Pigeon or something like that. Well, no, that was Cold No, Tom something Street. else. There's but, so many. Yeah. There's so many. Yeah. And I didn't realize it was really yeah, fun to do. Yeah, narrator one. Yeah, that's, yeah. That yeah. Cat was the, yeah, the original, but yeah. Yeah, but it was that, Actually, it was that. No, they were originally called uh, a, uh, uh, Rolando. Uh, an Ar- Armando. That's technically called an Armando. Okay. It was named after a guy, Armando Diaz, who was like in a um, uh, a improv troupe and just refused to actually do scenes. Like yeah, they, yeah. they would start a scene and be like, "Hey, mom, how are you today?" And, and Armando would just continue to be Armando and tell some random yeah, story. Yeah. <laughs> so they created a new format where it was just. Armando tells a story and then we do improv scenes based <laughs> off of it. Rather and than it's... the logical choice of firing Armando from the group. <laughs> I don't think they were allowed to. It was like a student troop or something. But yeah, that uh, that just goes to show there's never never any mistakes. And it's yeah, it's spun off this entire 
new format mm. of, right. a, of a comedy show that everyone has been to at least one of. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I know why I've been. I've, I've not that I've not gone. I just don't go to Sixth Street very much, and also like I work on weekends a lot. But right. I I used to go to Velveeta Room, but Mario's gone. Mm-hmm. Oh, Mario! Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah. My dude is gone. Yeah. yeah. Well, we've run through. Him. I don't know who to hang out with when yeah. I go. <laughs> Yeah. That's what happens to me. Is like it's such a great like that that sort of thing is so fun to do by yourself. Like mm-hmm. just kind of cruise around and go to different oh, shows, sure. mm-hmm. come and go as you want. If it's like a shitty night or whatever, you can go to another place. But like, yeah, yeah, you got like a bartender, at least a couple comedians. Yeah, yeah, we got people there. You can hang out with totally. Yeah, no, yeah. That, yeah, that kind of opportunistic uh, audience finding is is really the. Uh, the, I mean, that's like what you get from a thriving audience, and you need to be able to walk around somewhere too. Yeah, you can't do yeah, yeah. If you have to park every time you do that, yeah, so. that's the nice thing about the Velve too. Like being close to Esther's, it's kind of our clubhouse. Like we go right, there, like right. you always know somebody there. Every right. the bartenders, you're always going to get a free beer. You know, like yeah, it's nice. Those guys all used to go to mug shots. Oh yeah, man, man, man I miss mug crazy. shots. Like, I'd yeah, be yeah, like, yeah. God, why are we going to this place? Oh, it's the comics bar, man. If we close yeah. that place down so many times, <laughs> that was the only bar I would go to. Like, I would never go to bars and shit on Sixth Street, but if we were going to mug shots, yeah, yeah, I'll go to mug yeah, shots. I'll go, I'll go for one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll go for, for one. one. <laughs> <laughs> Two and a half yeah. hours later. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, is there anything like what? What is there anything you guys want people to know about Esther's that they don't yeah. know? It seems like. I feel like I like I was going through all this stuff and I was thinking to myself like why isn't there like a more like this isn't an historical fucking thing like the armadillo or something like I mean at this point it's been around yeah and it stayed open and all those mythical places all closed down this place I mean, is I still going the, yeah the trick is that we we don't take ourselves that seriously anytime somebody mentions you know one of these you know milestones to uh, to Shannon uh, specifically they're like oh yeah I guess so like you know, to them, it's just it's a job. It's just right. something that they've been doing for, for so long. I don't think they can see the you know the big picture. And, right. And we're loath to give anything you know, an extra level of uh, you know sanctimony or anything. You know. Yeah, yeah. Our self promotion game is not on par. <laughs> uh, Esther's has been this little engine that sort of chugs along despite our best efforts of like Let's we don't it. really advertise. <laughs> right, you right, know, right, we right, don't right. like so it manages itself. Uh, and I think we definitely Esther's definitely deserves to be mentioned in the same breath as those those legendary places. Of course it does. Uh, and plus, I, I'm going to say it again. It's still open. Yeah, right, <laughs> like, right, right. You know right. Totally, mean, like, well, may, and maybe that's why they're like, oh, it's not going anywhere. Like, once things die, right. then you revere them, you know. Yeah. What uh, the fuck is people, wrong with this town? Like, the, the failing person and the failing, like, they're, oh, they're always the champion of the town. Yeah, like, we're still selling people, tickets. We're still, the people are always <laughs> like, oh, I can't believe such and such has gone. It was like, when was the last time you went? Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. I think yeah, one true. important thing right. to know about Esther's and the, in relation to, like, talking about improv, so many people walk past Esther's and go, oh, it's improv. It's improv. And A, I think that means people... They they correlate just improv and comedy as kind of being the same thing, mm-hmm. you know. Uh, but one thing right, Esther's definitely right. Those but things. Esther's definitely is not improv because it's very tightly scripted and tightly rehearsed. And, yeah, you know. And I think it's um, one of the only things left that's the sort of modern vaudeville. Yeah, you know, it's a uh, it's that's it's probably the closest. Show. It's a variety show. It's the closest thing to it, and there's not a lot of that uh, left around. And it's also uh, people also tend to think Esther's is primarily political humor and maybe that's it's a your quarter fault. of what we do. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That, dude, that wig was fucking insane, by the way. <laughs> no, that, yeah, that quaff. That anyway, big old sorry, thing. go ahead. I didn't mean oh, to no, they, uh, they tend to think it's very political, so they might be scared away because they're afraid it doesn't jive with their own ideology. And we're all artists. We're all liberal. We have, you know, the, the show hues towards liberal more than anything else, but we throw darts at everyone. Right. You know? Yeah. Did you write a song about the uh, the people waiting for the uh, for the for JFK Jr. For to JFK show? Jr. No, <laughs> no. I wish that's. I, I'm, I'm sort of waiting to see if that story got more traction. You I know, has, yeah, aren't they has, still like, there or something? Level traction, so, but, <laughs> yeah. yeah, but that's another instance where it's so it's they, difficult to parody something. It's already fucking parody like if i'd written the joke i would have written as <laughs> them like, as waiting the for joke? jfk they're actually doing <laughs> yeah, it so yeah, where do right. we, you can't heighten that you can't make it more ridiculous you know yeah um is the book like a lot is there, there it's it's a coffee table book but is yeah, it is it still like a lot of words in there <laughs> still yeah there's still some words yeah it's actually a, an amazing i i learn something new every time i pick it up it's got all sorts of stories in there from uh you know ages past yeah we we share one with us 
Oh, Are the people man. just like something that people don't know about Esther's Follies? Like, uh, I mean, the one that always comes to mind is the which you lived was the the uh, what was the Davy Crockett and the East. Oh, Valley, oh yeah. Yeah. so my favorite one is the yeah, and this is making it in the book right. It's just one of my favorite silly Esther stories. Is we're all outside. Uh, on the street preparing to do some bit in the window and for whatever reason we're in these ridiculous costumes we have like Santa Claus and Davy Crockett and the Easter Bunny or whatever and there was this guy Carl Hickerson who oh, yeah, used yeah. to yeah, yeah, sit yeah. outside and spin flowers but Great. it was also this very confrontational cat and he got into it with some dude on the street and they were about to have an altercation and Carl in all his wisdom decides the best thing for him to do would be to flee into the theater and this guy pulls a knife and follows Carl into the backstage. So you got the Easter Bunny and Santa Claus and Davy Crockett <laughs> watching this go down. And we watch this guy run backstage. And all three of us kind of lock eyes. We're like, oh, shit. Don't do it. So we start <laughs> hightailing it towards the door. <laughs> Meanwhile, this guy found himself beyond his ken back there. Didn't know what he was doing. So just as we're about to do- reach the door, he blasts back out and sees Santa Claus, the Easter Bunny, and Davy Crockett bearing down on him. Jesus. He flees into the night. But like, I almost feel sorry for this dude. Like, how confused must he have been that this all unfolded the way it was? You know. But that's a great example of like dealing with crazies on the street while still maintaining your. <laughs> the show must go on. Yeah. Well, one thing, if you have a knife and you see David Crockett, you know he's yeah. got a bigger knife. Yeah, right, right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Hopefully he does. It's in his, it's, it's, it's not a rubber his, knife for his, yeah, yeah. his theater well, thing. Yeah, I guess. Boo- uh, we've also had some fun uh, altercations with audience members. The Oh, sure. There was, uh, there was one night, uh, this was, uh, it was leading, it was in December, I think. Uh, and a, uh, a woman, while I'm doing, playing Donald Trump, uh, in the middle of a sketch, I don't remember what I was probably yelling at Kellyanne Conway or something. Uh, strolls up or stumbles up. How do what do drunk people do? Uh, <laughs> sort of real st- up. Yeah, there's a saunter, stumbling staunter. A, a staunter, yeah. Uh, up the aisle, yells something along the lines of "Not my president," and then hurls her full margarita uh, at me, wings me in the shoulder. Uh, and I just kind of brush, <laughs> brush it up, and she goes charging out in, into the into the lobby. And at that point, I was like, "Does she not like Trump? Right, right, or right. Does she not like, like me by... making fun of Trump? Right, right. Apparently, she said some pretty racist stuff in the lobby, so that probably <laughs> confirmed that one. Yeah, but yeah, just a, a yeah a random random bit of of hostility. Yeah, which yeah, I guess is just like as. As much as we've tried to maintain, you know, making fun of both sides, we're kind of at a point where you can't, you know, pretend that yeah. one side is equal. Right, right, right. Other. Yeah. Mostly Republicans listen to this show, so you just lost all uh, yeah. God damn joking. it. <laughs> I mean, um, they still come to the show. Oh, yeah. they come, yeah, yeah, yeah. And we have, we have this one song uh, called I Want to Be Liberal, but it opens with the line of this very sexy girl on the piano saying, I voted for Trump. And lately, it's been getting more and more of a cheer, which kind of worries me. Like, there's definitely yeah. Trumpers in the audience. Oh, yeah, but, yeah. Then the, but then the song turns around and talks about how she'd fuck all of them and she wants to be liberal, which sort of quiets them down. But, yeah. like, we kind of want to replace that one just yeah. <laughs> just because I don't want to be like... like we well, yeah, do not support you. Get people who are like on their way out, uh, being like, "Don't agree with your politics, but you guys are funny as hell." Yeah, 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 like, yeah. Which is yeah, that is the general attitude when people if people come afraid that their ideology is not going to be coddled right. to, they they walk away funny. They're satisfied just because we're funny yeah. first and political second. Yeah. And if you are worked up that like all abortion is child murder, you're probably not going to have the best time. But <laughs> probably not get the best time anywhere. You're probably just miserable That's all the true. time. That's true. Yeah. It's miserable people have miserable times. Yeah. yeah. That is the truth. Um, so uh, so five shows a week. Thursday nights, 8 o'clock. Thursday 8, Friday 8 and 10, Saturday 8, 8 and 10. 10. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, anything else coming up that we know about? Uh, I mean, we've got all our, we're about to start rolling out our Christmas stuff. So it's a really good, you know, holidays are always, uh, I mean, well, it, we're almost always sold out. It's a, which gives a, a nice. When does that crowd. start? Like Black Friday? You start uh, the, yeah, pretty much. We start, uh, we start. Do you guys do a Thanksgiving it. show? No, no, we were, we do the day after Not Thanksgiving. The day of, yeah. yeah. Uh, we will be doing the day after. No, no, we won't be doing the day after Christmas. Christmas is all off this week because it falls on a right, Saturday. It, uh, yeah. No, no, we're doing a New Friday. Year's Day show this year. That was the exceptional thing. Oh. Yeah. 
<laughs> which we never do. We'll see what yeah. state we're No, no, the, uh, come on down. I mean, it's wear your mask, get vaccinated, be safe. Uh, but we, we're taking, you know, we take what safety precautions we can and, uh, you know, get back out with, with people. See some theater, man. Yeah. You know, safety wow. precautions, Greg Abbott, allows us to take. Yeah, right. <laughs> I met Peter Sagal and, uh, and, uh, uh, Peter Sagal of Wait, Wait, Don't Tell Me? Yeah. Yeah. And um, James Franco. Oh, sure. In the bathroom. I went with, uh, you remember Lucas Melendez? Yeah. Oh, yeah. So Lucas used to tour with Mark Maron a lot mm-hmm. and open for him a lot. And uh, he got us into this live WTF taping, me and him and Charlie Hodge. And uh, when it ended, we were going somewhere to go eat and stuff and I was like well hang on I gotta go to the bathroom and everyone was gone and they were talking to Marin and I went to the bathroom and there they were I was just like <laughs> oh wow it's amazing I was so drunk though yeah did you That's have like an awkward true. bathroom conversation with them or you just just like clock them like yeah we're peeing um, I, t- I told Peter Sagal that I was just shocked. Like, I couldn't stop staring at him because I got was... got a big dick, huh? I, no, yeah. It's, it's like, dude, it's fucking... I did not expect to be... James Franco, I missed the whole dick part. He was just washing his hands. But, like, uh, Peter Sagal, I was like, hey, that was really funny. And he was like, oh, thanks. And I was like, I'm a big fan of yours. And, like, I just always imagined you look like someone else. So, I'm just sorry. I'm staring at you. It is fun you, when like, you meet a radio personality, yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, isn't like, it? looking yeah. at him like, wow, I never looked up to see what you looked like. Yeah. And you look so much different than yeah. I thought you did yeah Terry Gross looks like as you'd expect her to look like she clocks yeah <laughs> she does yeah. everybody else not so much yeah who's the most per- interesting person you've ever met in a bathroom Ted yeah in the bathroom at Esther's anywhere uh well, okay, well now I met Maria Bamford just outside the bathroom okay alright that counts uh, but who's the mo- I, don't, I don't know what about you uh, when I was at ACL backstage, I met uh, the members of the band Blue October. Oh, <laughs> in the, in the, in the, in the shitter, yeah. yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I got to meet Janelle Monae. That's oh shit! That's not in the bathroom, though. Yeah, not in the bathroom. All right. No. Uh, that yeah, I don't think it gets much better than that. And we, yeah. she and I, have the same birthday. Oh yeah, December first. Yeah. Look at that. Yeah. Not the same age though, no. No. Right. I think she's younger than me. Those Blue October guys have been on the show. Yeah, they were a good band. We, I was so lucky. I got this was back in the year of Katrina. I did a, I was doing a children's show at Zach Scott, and we got invited to the Austin Kitty Limit stage. Yeah, yeah. So we had to do one little forty-five minute set, but oh, then we, we had badge. backstage, yeah, yeah. all access. Oh, it was the best, man. So much, it was but, so cool. You ever gone without that shit? No, I'll never sucks. go back. No, 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 I can't. Yeah, yeah, I can't. <laughs> <You're now>. going, <laughs> yeah, you can't ever. You can't go back to the outside of the out, no. yeah. outer perimeter. Nope. You can't I go into the middle anymore. Somebody who worked at KJSR <laughs> and went. I got to go backstage for a lot, and that was like super access. And I, yeah, yeah. now it makes it like everything, yeah, nothing appeals it, to me anymore. Even if someone's like, Hey, I got a free wristband, you want to come with yeah. me? Or two, like, what are you just walking around in the middle of the fucking thing? Like, no, nah, man, yeah, no, there's air yeah. conditioned places back there you can watch your shit on yeah, the yeah, white yeah, screen. Air TV there's and like a free, free bar. booze, free yeah, food, exactly. yeah, yeah. <clears throat> so until you can offer me that, like golf carts from show to show, yeah. 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 yeah, it's like yeah, it's like doing heroin and then somebody <laughs> coming up and being like, "Hey, you want a shot of well tequila?" Yeah, yeah, yeah. No. <laughs> no. I thought you were gonna say a CBD gummy. <laughs> yeah, or yeah, or a CBD gummy. Um, some CBD lip balm. Guys, it's been great talking to you, and you've in, you've inspired me to go to a show. Please do, and, please do, and check it out. People can go to estersfollies dot com, get tickets there. Uh, yeah, you can actually pick out your seats now. You still do, honey, boo boo. I did not currently do. Because well, that, that was in the bio thing, Dude, and I was like, wow, it seems like some people would be like, "Yeah, I remember that name. No, one point, <laughs> was that yeah. a weird baby from a reality show I or something? I used to joke that I have like, I like, I played, you know, the Pope, uh, Dick Cheney, Honey Boo Boo, Trump, you know, villains. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Putin. Yeah, Putin. I did Putin. Yeah. Putin. Yeah. Was it that um, one time you were on dressed in the wrong Sanders costume? Sanders. Was that were you dressed as Honey Boo Boo? You were supposed was. to come on. Yeah, no, I was dressed as Honey Boo Boo, but I was supposed to come on as a Secret Service. Agent. No, no, I remember <laughs> I was on stage and Ted is like eight seconds away from his queue, and I can see backstage Honey Boo Boo coming down the stairs. I'm just like, that ain't it. Uh-oh. <laughs> and I see the all of the Ted just, 
realize like shoot back upstage like a rocket change yeah. faster than any human has ever changed before and breathlessly makes it on stage for his cue Fortunately, like, we were supposed to be hung over in that scene so right oh that's what yeah. the sketch was that's right that's right that's right agents, yeah. i had a question for you uh sean uh, with the music stuff is, is it live like how do you perform it on stage like oh, what's, uh, what's we have, we're pretty is equally split between track guy? i have a piano player but a lot of our uh, the the musical numbers are tracked so we're about half and half yeah. of live piano to to track numbers Okay. And the guy who plays piano uh, creates the tracks. Creates yeah. all the He's tracks. your music yeah. guy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah. Well, guys, it's been great talking to you. Thanks for having and, us, man. Uh, yeah, thanks for coming. It's been nice. A little uh, outside. Beautiful. Like, beautiful. hey, guys, let's have class outside today. Yeah, yeah. totes. All right, everyone go to estersfollies.com. Get involved. Thanks, Ted and Show. Santa Claus is coming to town. That's Ted Meredith and Sean Brannigan from Austin's Modern Day Vaudeville Theater since 1978, Esther's Follies. You can find them at esthersfollies.com. Uh, shows every Thursday at 8 p.m. and every Friday and Saturday at 8 and 10 p.m. It's located at 525 East 6th Street in the heart of Dirty Six. I want to thank Sean and Ted for joining me by the pool a couple months ago shooting the shit. Talking about Esther's Follies, learning about Esther's Follies. Check out that book that my friend Jesse Sublet wrote. And don't forget, gang, when you're out there checking out esthersfollies.com, you can subscribe to this podcast wherever it is that you find podcasts, be it Spotify, Apple Podcasts, TuneIn, Overcast, Stitcher, anywhere. New shows all the time. All right? I want to thank, uh, thank Sean and Ted for coming by. I want you to have a very Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas to all of you guys. Merry, Merry Christmas. I hope you are exactly where you want to be. And if you're not, reach out to someone. Someone out there wants to hear what you have to say. Let them know you need someone. All right? Merry Christmas. I love you guys. Let's get down. <laughs>